Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little under the weather right now. I might be coughing a little bit, but stick with me. My throat's a little sore. So today, we're going to be learning about the isometries of Euclidean space. So first, we're going to take attendance, though, as you do for any class. So let's get my attendance sheet. OK, we've got Tyler here. Team Stein. Here. OK. And Lance, Rick, Rice. Rice, Lance Rice. OK. OK. It's nice to see the whole class is here today. I wouldn't want to have been teaching without your fellow classmates present. So we'll continue with the lesson. So first, does anyone know what an isometry is? Doesn't it have something to do with distance? Oh, it's a dis distance preserving function. That's right, class. As you mentioned, an isometry is a distance preserving function. Distance preserving function. So, if we have this initial distance from point 1 to point 2 is going to be 8 inches. So then, this undergoes a transformation from the um, transformation of point 1, which is that point, and then 8 inches away we're going to have the transformation of point two. That is a distance preserving function. It's the same distance between the original two points of eight inches and the transformation of the two points also of eight inches. Now, do you know what Euclidean space is? I don't remember exactly. I know it's not a hyperbolic or spherical geometry. Yes, those are the, the three geometries we have discussed. We've discussed hyperbolic, spherical geometry, and then Euclidean geometry, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. The geometry of Euclidean space follows Euclid's five axioms. Today, we will work in the two-dimensional Euclidean plane, the 3D Euclidean space, and continuously onto the infinite Euclidean space. That's when things get really interesting. The Euclidean end space is, de is denoted EN. The Euclidean end space. With the two-dimensional space is then denoted E2 and also E3, and then finally, the infinite Euclidean space, which is denoted as E, the little, your little side wave 8 up there next to it. Finally, we'll show that a transformation of Euclidean end space, which preserves light, must be, a, must be a rigid Euclidean motion from E to the N onto E to the N. As a result, this will hold true for any finite Euclidean space. Excuse me, Mr. Bernardi, how do we know that? Great question. We know that this holds true for any n space, as well as 2n. If we take any finite number and double it, we'll end up with an even bigger finite number. Since the statement holds true for 2n, we can conclude that it will hold true for 4n, since it is double of 2n, and therefore any finite number. The principal result is the theorem. This is a long theorem, guys, so you should put it in your notes. Let T be a transformation of E to the N onto itself. Let D of PQ be the distance from P to Q. Let T of P and T of Q be the images of P and Q, respectively. If there is a length A greater than zero, such that d of 
TP, TQ equals A whenever D of PQ equals A, then T is a Euclidean transformation of E N. Is everyone following? Got that already? It is mind-blowing stuff the first time you hear it. I thought so too. So I know you all just love to listen to me talk, but I think we can definitely learn more by heading out of this classroom to further explore the subject. Here we are meeting with Justin Smith, who has spent nearly his entire last 20 minutes devoted to the study of Euclidean geometry. Mr. Smith will discuss whether T is single-valued or multi-valued. Let's, let's head in and see what he has to say. Mr. Smith, I understand you recently came to a conclusion on whether the transformation of an isometry in Euclidean space is single-valued. Ah, uh, yes. First, we must consider whether T is not single-valued. This will result in there being two positive images of points P1. As a result, by a contradiction, T must be single-valued. And why exactly do we have to determine the value of T? Well, we know that its an isometry is valid for all finite Euclidean spaces, that is E2 through En, where their N is an element of the positive integer greater than 3. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what we had discussed in class right before leaving on this field trip. You take math classes on field trips? Oh yes. I try, I try to take my foundations of geometry class on the field trip at least once a week. This is great. I bet your class is really uh, interested and engaging. Anyway, to answer your initial question, we must show that T is single valued in order to prove its truthfulness for the finite Euclidean spaces, or E infinity. Can we now start looking at that proof? Yes. Now you should try to prove that T is applicable for E infinity. Good luck. Thanks for your input. We'll be sure to stop by again if we have any more questions. You've definitely pushed us in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Smith. See ya. So, we've already discussed a lot of the aspects of the transformations of Euclidean space. We've begun to look into each of the second. We have seen the validity of T, specifically the distance between P1 and P2 is the same as the distance between the transformation of P1 and P2. What should be our next step? Should we look at E to infinity now? Well, let's put it this way. If you're playing football for the first time, would you start out with pads, running routes, catching, catching the ball? Or are you going to slowly progress from no pads, no pads standing still, up to running routes in the pads? I would slowly progress through. Exactly. In the same way, we're going to move up to E3, E to the fourth, and then e to the n. From e to the n, we can then extend it to e to the 2n. And finally, all finite Euclidean spaces. Ah, that makes sense. Let's do it. Whoa there! Class is over for the day. I'll see you all on Friday, eagerly waiting to learn about the isometries of Euclidean space e3. How are we doing today? We are, as you probably know, you are sitting in your Foundations of Geometry class, also Math 4022. So we're, we're going to start the day with attendance, you know, like usual. So we've got a, do we have Taylor Hart, Harton? Harton Stone? Yes. Taylor Harton Stone? Got it. Okay. And do we have a Lance? R Bryce. Bryce. Good man. Okay. Well, everyone's here again. Wow. What a lucky guy I am to have my whole class every day. So, do you remember what we discussed at the end of last class? We're going to conduct a proof for E3 showing that a transformation in and of itself is an isometry that preserves the distance, right? Excellent! It's nice to know that you all pay attention so well in class. I wish I would pay attention that well and study as hard as you all did back when I was in school in my foundation of geometry class. So last class, what was the first thing we did? Well, we talked about the definition of isometry and determined what Euclidean space was. 
Well, that is right. We did talk about that first. But then what did we do? Oh, then we showed that transformations preserve distance. Yes. We showed that if the, if the distance of P1 and P2 equals A, then the distance of the transformation of P1 and the transformation of P2 also equals A. So then, in E2, we have something that looks like this. We've got our one function is P1 to P2. And then we have some sort of a transformation that occurs. We then have our transformation of P1 to our transformation of P2, which as you can see, they're approximately the same distance. And this is in the Euclidean plane. Obviously, it's much, much harder to diagram in the Euclidean space E3, since, you know, my board is flat, unfortunately. That'd be pretty cool if we had a 3D board, though. I would like that. We can try to represent this, assuming this classroom represents E3. Um, yes, so Tyler and... Uh, it's Taylor. Taylor? I'm, I'm, I apologize, Taylor. Taylor, could you come up and uh, Mr. Rice, was it? Yep. Or it was Rice? No. Okay, you can come up. So, Tyler, Taylor, I apologize. Could you hold this stapler? above your head <laughs> and set this item on the desk. Now, Mr. Spaghetti? Yeah. Mr. Spaghetti, could you hold this item? Not that item. We, I, don't, I need a try with I don't have another thing, so... Uh, <laughs> no. Mr. Spaghetti, could you hold that above your head and place this item on the desk the same distance away as the item is from Taylor? Yes, very good. As you can see, there's the same distance between both of your objects. Therefore, your two objects are a transformation, an isometry, actually, of Taylor's two objects. But now, if I would do this, and all of a sudden your object is now there, is this still an isometry? Yes. A nice try. It is an isometry. Because as you can see, the distance is still preserved. It doesn't matter that they're in the same orientation as long as the distance is preserved. You can turn your sheets. Now that we have showed that the transformation T preserves length, or that it is an isometry, now what can we conclude? <coughs> well, last time we concluded that <coughs> T was originally Euclidean motion in each second. Correct. So we can now say that T is originally Euclidean motion in E3. Do you see a pattern here? Well, do we do the same process for E4? And then E5, 6, and 7? Excellent. Then, finally, for E to the N and E to the very good. Why aren't you two just teaching this class? What do they pay me for? Due to time sake, we're not actually going to do all these proofs that it's very lengthy and fill this board many, many times. But you could if you had to, which you might on an exam in the future. Be ready. <laughs> well, we finished the theorem for this section. Proving its validity for E2 through E to the 2n. I didn't see you there. So yesterday, we finished concluding that an isometry in Euclidean space is valid all the way from E2 through E3, through E4, through E5, through E47, through E58, through E1024, all the way up to EN. Now, you should be ready for your test. Your test is next Wednesday. Study hard, be prepared, come ready. I will see you then. Bye class.